dead people can talk. Such a conclusion can be made after scientists announced that they made a real mummy speak. What does the voice from the distant past sound like? And how did the scientists get it? Now you'll find out. Let's go. The protagonist of the episode is Nishaman. This is the name of the priest who lived during the difficult period of the reign of Pharaoh Ramses XI around 1,100 years BC. Nishaman was a priest at Thebes and needed a strong voice to perform rituals involving singing. After Nishaman's death, his voice fell silent. But 3,000 years later, thanks to a group of scientists, it resounded again. The scientists created a 3D printed voice device using Nishaman's vocal tract as the basis which was carefully scanned using a magnetic resonance tomograph. Using a vocal tract with artificial laryngeal sound, they were able to synthesize the sound of a vowel letter as if it had been pronounced by Nishaman. Mm. Mummy sounds like this. Mm. It sounds like mm. the way Google Translator says mm. the sound A, but it's mm. not Google Translator. Scientists have synthesized exactly the voice of Nishaman. To reproduce the sound that Nishaman's vocal track made, the scientists recreated its exact dimensions on a 3D printer. The muscle tissue of Nishaman's vocal track was preserved well enough, so after scanning the mummy, the scientists easily reproduced the priest's vocal track. So far, the A sound is the pinnacle of the scientist's achievement. In addition, in the future, researchers hope to use computer models to reproduce entire sentences in the real voice of Nishaman. All in all, it won't be long before mummies will be talking for real. By the way, as the scientist told us, it was written on the shaman's sarcophagus so that he could be heard after he died. It turns out that scientists were able to fulfill his wish. The shaman turned out to be a benevolent Egyptian, which cannot be said for many of his compatriots. Their tombs and sarcophagi were often covered with curses, and many of their mummies boded ill fortune. Let's take a look at them, too. Stay tuned to see cursed tombs and mummies that will surprise you. Nowadays, many people adore ancient Egypt and strive to explore it in every detail. The tomb of Tutankhamun made a huge contribution to those aspirations. Its discovery was the biggest event in the history of Egyptology, as well as one of the most important events in world archaeology. At the same time, the discovery of the tomb set in motion a series of eerie events. The tomb was found in 1922 in the Valley of the Kings. The tomb was well preserved with numerous household items, jewelry and artifacts that accompanied the pharaoh to his last journey. Four arcs and three sarcophagi of precious metals preserved the mummified body of King Tut and the found golden mask which covered the face and chest of the deceased pharaoh became one of the symbols of all Egypt. A pile of useful artifacts made the tomb famous, but its curse was even more famous. It's believed that the tomb of Tutankhamun was originally cursed and should never have been opened. Coincidence or not, within a few years of the excavation, about 10 people who were somehow related to that tomb died. And the next tomb seems to have been cursed for real. The tomb of the mummy of the great priestess of the temple of Pharaoh Amenemet II Amun-Ra was found in Thebes in 1902. Five local residents were digging the pyramid but stumbled upon the sarcophagus. They later sold the sarcophagus with the mummy to four English archaeologists, and then the first frightening event began. The locals quarreled among themselves because they couldn't divide the money they received, and the whole thing escalated into a stabbing. No one survived. Those were the first five victims of the Egyptian priestess. There was more to come. An Egyptologist who was transporting a mummy to Cairo injured his finger on a sarcophagus and got blood poisoning. The surgeons had to amputate his hand urgently to save his life. The scientist's assistant, who was engaged in shipment of the mummy to London, soon committed suicide. A third member of the archaeological expedition died of fever, and the fourth one was run over by a cart. The photographer, who was commissioned by the Egyptian authorities to take pictures of the priestess, went mad. And the other photographer died of sunstroke. Priestess found her rest only in the British Museum when she was taken there. Ancient Egyptian society was hierarchical. At the very bottom were slaves. According to the widespread version, it was slaves who built the legendary Egyptian pyramids. But modern science believes that the construction was done by professional hired laborers. By the way, they were buried in the tombs on the Giza Plateau, not far from the pyramids. These workers are interesting not only because they called stone blocks so dashingly, but also because their tombs are considered to be cursed. On the walls of one of the tombs, which are 4,500 years old, there are inscriptions, among which archaeologists found ancient curses against thieves. 
The inscriptions read, All people who enter this tomb, who will make evil against this tomb and destroy it, may the crocodile be against them in water, and snakes against them on land, may the hippopotamus be against them on water, the scorpion against them on land. In spite of this, a few years ago, the workers' tombs were open to tourists. Anyone can see for themselves whether these curses work or not. It's not known if these curses actually work, but we shouldn't rule it out. The ancient tombs have shown themselves in all their glory before. Egyptian mummies disturb not only people who are in Egypt. History knows cases when Egyptian mummies caused suffering outside the country as well. The most famous such case is related to the Titanic. Everyone's well aware of the history of this ship. It was considered unsinkable, but on its first voyage, it hit an iceberg and sank. There are many versions explaining what happened, and according to one of the most exotic, the cursed Egyptian mummy was to blame. It was carried by the British historian Lord Canterville. The mummy of an Egyptian soothsayer was in a wooden box, and above her head was an amulet with the image of Osiris, the ancient Egyptian king of the afterlife. The inscription on the amulet read, Rise from oblivion, your gaze will conquer all who stand in your way. The soothsayer's remains were too valuable cargo to keep in the hold, so the mummy box was placed next to the captain's bridge. According to the legend, this is what led to the tragedy. It's believed that the spirit of the soothsayer decided to take revenge on the people who disturbed her peace. According to this version, the mummy influenced the mind of Captain Smith, who in spite of numerous warnings about the ice in the area where Titanic sailed, didn't slow the ship down. Sometime after the disaster, stories of surviving passengers about the tragedy appeared in the newspapers. Many claimed that just a few minutes before the collision, the captain was seen next to a box carrying a mummy. Serbian Ice Maiden It's not only many Egyptian mummies that are cursed. Don't forget that mummification was practiced in many parts of the world, so cursed mummies are found everywhere. Another such is the Siberian Ice Maiden or the Altai Princess. It was found during excavations at Ak Alaka burial ground. As archaeologists recollect, at excavation the thunder sounded, and all present seemed that the ground trembled under their feet. The ancient burial was well preserved. Scientists have even established the cause of death of the girl it was breast cancer. Also in the tomb, they found many interesting artifacts. However, the joy of the discovery was soon displaced by dismay. When the archaeologists were preparing to transport the mummy, their car broke down. They tried to call for another car, but it malfunctioned on the way. Only at the third attempt, they managed to take the unknown princess from Ukok Plateau, this time by helicopter. But it also couldn't reach the final destination. During the flight, one of the engines broke down. It was only by some miracle that the pilot was able to land without consequences. But that wasn't the end. It's believed that the mummy not only broke the machines, but also sent a powerful Chuya earthquake on Altai which became one of the strongest and most destructive in the history of Russia. The local shamans were sure that the Siberian Ice Maiden was angry that her peace was disturbed. Otzi Otzi is another cursed mummy found outside of Egypt. It was found in 1991 in the Otzel Alps, which is how Otzi got his name. Scientists discovered that the ancient man, who lived 5,000 years ago, was frozen in the cold mountains, and from this his body was perfectly preserved. Several artifacts were found at Otzi, including the world's oldest bowstring. That would have been all right, but this harmless and scientifically useful mummy caused quite a bit of suffering. Since Otzi's discovery, at least seven people have died under unpleasant or mysterious circumstances. As in the case of the tomb of Tutankhamun, all of them were in one way or another connected with the study of Otzi and the storage or transportation of the Iceman. But let's go back to Egypt. After all, there are many more mummies here than anywhere else. Of course, not all of them are cursed, and some of them are very different from ordinary ones. For example, the screaming mummy. It looks creepy, open mouth, face full of horror and pain, turned head and twisted posture. But what's wrong with this mummy in the first place? Why is she screaming? Could she be possessed by something? Or did the embalmers make her like this on purpose to scare future scientists? For more than 100 years, scientists didn't know the answers to these questions and only recently got to the bottom of it. They used computer tomography to discover that the mummy was of a woman who had died of a heart attack. Apparently, it happened very suddenly. Most likely, the body was found no sooner than a few hours after her death. By that time, the body was already stiff and the embalmers had to work with it as they could, hence the frightening appearance. The screaming mummy is one of the most unusual in the history of Egypt. 
but there are several other mummies that'll surprise you. Stay tuned for them. Lady Rye As a rule, many mummies that come down to our time are not preserved in perfect condition. Lady Rye is an entirely different case. This woman lived about 1,500 years BC. The mummified remains of the woman who died in her 30s or 40s were found in 1881. The mummy amazed even the coolest Egyptologists of the time. After conducting research and analysis, they couldn't believe that the mummy was already about 3,500 years old because it looked so good. The mummy of Lady Rai is considered one of the most successfully preserved in history, and Egyptologists call it an example of brilliant embalming. Ramses II Perhaps you've never heard of Ramses II the Great. If so, you should know this. This is one of the most iconic and greatest pharaohs of ancient Egypt. There's an interesting story connected with the mummy of Ramses the Great. The mummy itself was found in 1881 and exhibited in the Egyptian Museum. In 1975, a scientist who studied the remains of Ramses noted that the mummy was in danger of being destroyed by fungus and needed urgent treatment to prevent complete decomposition. It was decided to send the mummy to the Musée de la Homme, but the laws of the time stated that entry and transportation through the country required a valid passport. So, specifically to comply with local laws, the Egyptian government issued a passport to the pharaoh. The transportation was successful, and later in the sterile room of the Ethnographic Museum of Trocadero, scientists spent several months on the general preservation and examination of the mummy of the legendary pharaoh. That's all, guys. Which mummy impressed you the most? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and see you later.